Hey guys, I'm Simon and welcome back to more Magic the Gathering lore. Today I want to continue the saga that is the battle for Zendikar. In the next chapter of this block's story, we follow Nisa Ravain as she discovers what it truly means to be one with the plane itself. We learn from her origin story that Nisa was gifted with the ability to connect with the spirit of Zendikar, and as the plane's chosen champion, it aids her in her fight by taking the form of a giant elemental. Now, Nisa must discover for herself what's needed to be done for Zendikar. Nisa stands in observance of her home, her plane, and now her ally, Zendikar. She knows what threatens her world, the beings which have caused the very soul of the plane so much pain, the Eldrazi. Even now, in this tranquil place, Nisa can see their chalky wakes of destruction left behind as if they were mocking the elf. Although these are dark times for the world, Nisa never felt alone. Though she had left her village and her friends, she was now in the presence of Zendikar itself. The elemental which had been so loyal towards her without even uttering a single word was more of a kindred spirit than she had ever known before. They were linked at a fundamental level. Even in battle, the pair fought as one, and together they saw to the deaths of numerous Eldrazi. All throughout their trials and hardships, their victories and failures, Nisa could always count on this elemental to be there for her. Yet this thought only comforted her so much. Soon Nisa began to wonder what brought the elemental to her in the first place. It never spoke a word, or made any kind of gesture which Nisa could decipher. It only ever performed one hand motion repeatedly, a few times a day. A simple movement of its arm-like branch from its chest, to the sky, and back again. The meaning of this gesture was lost to Nisa, and the elemental wasn't answering her questions anytime soon. It frustrated her to no end, but still, she pushed on. Nisa wanted to turn the elemental from just her ally in battle to more of a personable friend, and so she named it Ashaya, meaning the Awoken World. The elemental seemed to like the name, in whatever way Nisa thought it showed approval, and it stuck. This calming exchange was interrupted by screams which pierced through the trees as if they were destined to find Nisa's ears. The elf and her elemental wasted no time and rushed to the call. They reached a high peak, and below, they saw the source of the disturbance. An encampment was under siege by three of Ulamog's spawn. They hurried down the cliff face, but it was thick with branches and thorns. Nisa tripped twice just making her way through. When her and her elemental landed, destruction had already befallen the camp. Blood, Eldrazi gore, and chalky husks were all that remained, and Nisa felt the dread of failure swell inside her. Though they were unable to save these lives, they were in a position to avenge them. Nisa placed all of her power into Ashaya and charged towards one of the faceless Eldrazi. This one was large, with numerous tentacle appendages combined with fingered hands. Despite its size, it was no match for Nisa's trampling elemental. Willing the elemental one, Nisa watched as Ashaya ripped the Eldrazi apart, tentacle after tentacle. Peeling into the very core of the colorless monster, the elemental tore the Eldrazi asunder. It was destroyed in a manner befitting its own crimes against the world. Nisa savored the victory, but in her delight, she lost track of the other two remaining Eldrazi. A large, purple tentacle found its way wrapped around Ashaya's leg, causing the elemental to crash down. It was in a problematic position, trapped under the weight of the Eldrazi. If Nisa didn't act quickly, Ashaya could be consumed by the Eldrazi, and she would lose her only ally. Just then, a scream that mirrored the one which summoned the pair to the camp called out from the nearby tree. It was a young, female core, trapped on a branch with the last Eldrazi at its base. The core tried to fight back, but she was already weak and injured from the previous battle. She would die if not assisted. Nisa had a dilemma, save her elemental or save the core. She couldn't be in two places at once and decided that she needed her elemental to save the core. Ashaya needed to be rescued first. Nisa used her magic to encase the core in a protective barrier of branches and vines. It may not be much of a shield against the might of an Eldrazi, but it would have to do. She then turned to Ashaya, who was still pinned by the Eldrazi. She focused all of her strength and power into the elemental, Surging with Nisa's might, it was able to break free from its bonds and smash the Eldrazi as if it were nothing more than an insect. Her attention then immediately turned to the core, but she was gone, and so was the Eldrazi threatening her. Nisa and her elemental ran through a path of corrupted trees, only to find the Eldrazi feeding on the already dead core. 
With her body nothing more than chalky dust, Nisa was dealt her biggest defeat yet. Her and Ashaya made their way back to the devastated camp. Nothing was left for them there but death. These were lives lost forever, thanks to the Eldrazi. The deadly silence was broken by the spoken words, It's not your fault. For a half second, Nisa believed it could be the first words from Ashaya, but that fantasy dissolved when she saw a lone vampire standing at the edge of the camp. He was carrying a human female who had been badly injured by the Eldrazi. Nisa jumped back, understandably cautious about this vampire. She hasn't had the best experience when it comes to this race. The vampire told Nisa that the woman was dying, but that he had freed her from her pain. When she passed, they could bury her with the others. Nisa was bewildered by the tenderness this vampire showed towards a human, but that was only the first of many questions she wanted answers for. The vampire could answer all these questions if Nisa would only answer one of his. Why was she still here? He knew she was a planeswalker and figured that anyone who could planeswalk would have already left this doomed plane. Nisa was stunned by this question and really had no way to answer it, but the vampire was not done yet. He said that he was seeking a planeswalker to entrust with a special mission, a mission designed by the ruined sage himself, Anuman. Many years ago, this old vampire had accompanied her as she foolishly released the Eldrazi from their prison. Ever since, Anuwan had been stalking her, seeking her death. Yet Anuwan was nowhere to be seen. All that stood before her was a lonely vampire bearing a gift and a request. He carried with him four seeds, all from plants which had become extinct on Zendikar as a result of the Eldrazi. Zendikar was doomed. Nothing could stop the Titan Ulamog. All that remained now were these seeds and the hope that somewhere in the multiverse, the essence of Zendikar could live on. This was the vampire's and Anuwan's desire for a planeswalker to take these seeds far from Zendikar and allow them to live on in another world. Nisa was in denial. She refused to take the seeds, fearing it would mean that she too believed the world was doomed. The vampire pressed and Nisa eventually surrendered. She took the seeds and promised she would plant them again. Guilt and doubt filled Nisa's thoughts. Maybe she wasn't the right choice for Zendikar. She wasn't strong enough to be its savior. Saving these plants would have to do. There was no stopping the Eldrazi, at least not for her. Just then, Ashaya performed its normal daily hand gesture. Still, Nisa had no idea what it meant. Even in her troubled state, she tried to understand its meaning. When she mimicked the elemental's movements and opened her hands, it was the first time anything ever happened. A green magic glue from her fingertips. It was the very essence of Zendikar itself passing through Nisa and appearing in front of her. This was the true spirit of Zendikar, the ley line of power which flowed through all things. Nisa was connected, truly connected, to the entirety of Zendikar. She felt the world's emotions, fears, and its will to fight. Nisa mirrored these emotions, for as long as the land was in danger, so was she, and as long as the land was willing to fight, so was Nisa. Nisa could feel the pain of the world. She could pinpoint the location of nearby Eldrazi as if she was flying in the sky overhead. When one was nearby, Nisa wasted no time in pursuing it. This time as she ran, the world ran with her. Branches and vines that once got in her way now moved and formed stepping stones to hasten her stride. Mountains and land masses split open to allow her safe passage, and Ashaya grew more powerful and passionate. She quickly found the Eldrazi and put her newfound connection to the test. With every movement she made, Ashaya would mimic it. They moved in perfect time with one another. Misa wound her arm back, and instinctively, rock and earth came together to form a spear in her hands. She threw it with the force of all the winds on Zendikar. The spear hit its mark at the same time as Shia landed a crushing blow onto the Eldrazi. It was utterly destroyed. Nisa was now the living weapon of Zendikar. As the plane's new weapon, the land itself answered her call to battle. She was now joined by more elementals than she could count. This was her army, and the war was just beginning. And that's the latest chapter in the Battle for Zendikar story. We can see the continued development of Nisa's character. She goes through troubled times, self-doubt, yada yada, but in the end, she's just as badass as ever. Now she has an entire army of elementals, which she'll put to good use against Ulamog and the Eldrazi. 
Will it be enough to save Zendikar? We'll find out soon enough. In any case guys, I want to know what you think about Nisa. Do you think her and her elementals are enough to stop the Eldrazi? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really goes a long way in supporting future content. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.